the most functional thing in the whole of this campsite. A naked man popped out of the sand dune. As I continued to walk along the shore, another naked bloke popped out. Then a naked woman popped out. Obviously, I realised then that it's a um, it's a nudist beach. It's, it's nice they've got a place to do what they want to do. I'm very, very excited for this psychedelic adventure that we're about to go on. You've been warned about the nudist thing. Welcome back to the channel. We're Janine and Liam Day, a married couple who are attempting, despite all the challenges, to live, travel and vlog full-time in our converted removals truck camper van conversion in the UK. We are currently doing an almost full circular route of mainland Britain, starting and ending in Kent. Last week we travelled the west coast of Wales and enjoyed stealth camping at some of the best Welsh beach hotspots. This week we are adventuring through North Wales and we start today's video off unintentionally at a beach campsite where clothing is optional. So pack your swimsuits, or don't, whatever you decide, and please subscribe to the channel as our Welsh adventures continue in Morgan, our removals truck. Good morning and welcome to Northwest Wales. We're in Snowdonia, uh, pretty much where we left you last time, and we are in a holiday park, believe it or not. I think this is our first, it's probably our third campsite overall this year in Morgan, and it's probably our very first holiday park. Um, the reason why we're in a holiday park is because we're in the local town called Barmouth. That's where we left, left you last time. We needed laundry, we needed um, water. Janine would have liked, liked to straighten her hair and, and all of that sort of business, and which we don't get to do on the road, unfortunately, because of inverter situations and what have you so yeah laundry that and just being able to pull up use wi-fi and and all that sort of thing so we so i managed to find one that cost 18 pounds for the night that's this one 18 pounds i think you'd agree that's a very very cheap price for a holiday park and it's right on the beach it's literally right on the beach so even through pure curiosity and to snag a bargain we came in and that's where we stayed last night and it's been pretty good I mean, it's a very very quirky place it's got splashes of pontins and butlins on it mixed with some sort of like like your southern france camping park sort of thing with a little bit of wilderness and pine trees i'll show you around in fact janine might show you around the place and explain a little bit more about what we're going to be up to good morning everyone so i am going to do a really quick whistle stop tour of this awesome campsite that we're on starting by where we've pitched here now on this lovely field there's quite a few fields actually that you can park up on but it's quite a big campsite so we're on this one here and it doesn't have electrical hookup it's the only spot that was left on such short notice and it was really good for one night on our field our little section we have a bin and it looks like a port -a but it's locked for some reason so I've been using the bigger toilets I didn't even know that one was there so this place is absolutely massive um, and when you walk to the big toilets and shower rooms and stuff you need a card to get in and they also on reception they give you these other paper cards you get 10 minutes electricity with these paper cards but you can go back really a few times and ask for more and they don't charge you extra. You get a 10 minute shower and you have to use the cards to use your hairdryer as well. So, but they do have plug points so you can use your own hairdryer. For me, it's a good thing. So I had to be really quick then just showing you um, the toilet facilities and showers and stuff like that because there were obviously people getting changed and things in there. Um, so apologies if I didn't get that much footage, um, but I'm walking now around to, it's like a chill out zone. They also have a restaurant and a cafe. Um, the cafe is open at the moment. I checked the menu, it's not very vegan friendly. It's sort of a greasy spoon type cafe. Um, and the restaurant is closed at the moment. So I don't know what that's like. But anyway, they've got a laundrette somewhere around here. Look who it is. Are you come to join me in the laundrette. <laughs> I'm having such a good time in here. I bet you are. There's me and, and the washers and the dryers. <laughs> uh, I'll point out something very, very quickly that I think is probably one of the best features I've ever seen at a campsite. You ready for it? I'm ready. Are you ready for it? Ready. And it applies massively to us. Have you ever seen anything so good? That is really good. It's the, probably the most functional thing in the whole of this campsite. There's a, um, a spa or swimming pool or something. Yeah, it's a leisure complex with a jacuzzi, heated twi swimming pool, steam room and sauna. I have not got a clue where it is. Somewhere. We can just we can just take everyone's word for it that it's here. Okay. We have not had the time to go to it. Okay. Apologies about that one. I literally, I've been looking around for it and I can't find it. The place is really big, um, but 
they do have a swimming pool here. It was coming up to 11 a.m. so we had to leave the campsite area but parked up close by as we had one last thing that we wanted to see before we leave. So yeah, overall this campsite's really good because of the price of it. Yeah, it's got a few quirky features, some things don't work and it's got these pebble dash buildings that are a bit like Pontins and Butlins and uh, the shower system with the token isn't so good and um, the water's not particularly hot and all that sort of business but it's very much reflected in the price anyway. But what was really funny, the, the bit that we've not told you about it yet, and I found so funny yesterday, was we parked up uh, the place, the, the plots that they gave us. We parked up and we did like a few hours of work there. It was quite a, quite a warm day. I um, decided to go for a walk on the beach, the, na the beach and go and check it out. And so I went for a walk on the beach, went to the beach, took a right, and uh, all of a sudden, a naked man popped out of the sand dunes. <laughs> I was like, hey, what's going on here? And uh, as I continued to walk along the shore, another naked bloke popped out, and then a naked woman popped out, and then, Obviously, I realised then that it's a um, it's a nudist beach. So the, the actual this holiday park is right next to a nudist beach. It's not if you've got family and you want to bring them here, it's not right on the nudist beach. But as you go out, we're going to go there now and show you. As you go out onto the beach and take a right, it's not far down there that you start noticing lots of naked people in the sand dunes. I found it quite funny anyway because I wasn't expecting it and didn't know that. And it's the first nudist beach that we've come across on uh, in Wales so far. But uh, yeah, we'll go walk and take you down there now. Don't we? We're not going to film any um, nude people, but we'll show you, take you down there now. So this is it, this is Benar Beach. This is the beach that's sort of pretty much attached to the to the uh, campsite, the holiday park. So all around this area, even though I've just spotted a new person just actually in this area, the majority of people here are clothed in this bit. But just over there, when I, I walked in that direction, and that's where all of the new people started coming out the sand dunes. <laughs> and it's only when you don't expect it that it's funny. But it's not funny, it's, they, they can, it's, it's nice they've got a place to do what they want to do. So yeah, but that, what a beautiful beach, eh? The sand's so soft, big sand dunes. I've, got, I've started to recognise that sort of big sand dunes are sort of closely related to um, nude beaches. Flat, and then it's flat sand, and then this sort of quite flat sort of sea as well, which is, which is really nice, yeah really stunning do do really recommend it massively especially for 18 quid a night it is just simply a stunning beach with like mountains in the distance so i love it when you can see the sea and then the land sort of curves around with mountains and that's exactly what this place has got it's not too busy there's people here but it isn't too busy which is nice Just so you know, where we're heading is over there. They just, we don't know any of this area at all. So it sort of goes up to this point. This place over here is called Shell Island. Nudist Beach. <laughs> and then uh, it goes inland. And then it goes to inland, just the most interesting beach town, village in the whole of the UK. It has to be the quirkiest, most interesting. It's also fe featured in TV programs and even films, I think. <coughs> and that's where we're heading next. The tide is coming in really quickly and so, so our, we need to go and get our photography equipment. So we, yeah, we're heading over there. This episode is gonna be brilliant because of where we're gonna go next. I think it's gonna make it absolutely psychedelic, let's say. Oh, it is so sad to be leaving such a pretty beach, but I'm very, very excited for this psychedelic adventure that we're about to go on. Oh, that was, that was a proper narrow miss. We were just stood there and the tide started coming in so we moved further in, turned around and there's a blooming jellyfish where we were just standing. Oh, that could have been painful. I would have had to pee on your foot. <laughs> or vice versa. <laughs> We made our way back to the van, grabbing some water before we leave the campsite and headed on to hit the road for another epic Welsh road trip. Okay, so goodbye holiday park and lovely beach. Uh, that was a really good night's stay. Thoroughly recommend it. Um, you've been warned about the nudist thing. <laughs> but although it doesn't affect the holiday park as such, you have to go down the beach a bit to see it, but or to, to experience it or whatever. 
Um, anyway, the roads leading in and out of it, which we're on now, are very, very tight, so be, be warned about that as well. Anyway, the next stop is a place called Harlech. Harlech, I've never been to before, neither is Janine, and it's come highly recommended by you guys. So we're gonna go and check it out now. So far, your recommendations have been fantastic, so hopefully this is a straight flush. And then after that, we're gonna go to the psychedelic place. So off we went on this glorious sunny day up the windy Welsh roads to go and see what Harlech is all about. Okay, so we've parked up in the beautiful little village of Harlech. As we were coming in, we could see the massive, vast beach and all the sand dunes. It looks gorgeous, but the town's a little bit further back and that's where we are now. Liam is hungry, so I think he's gonna try and find something to eat. Liam's gone 24 hours without eating <laughs> and he's very, very, very hungry. He's hungry and he's hangry. I'm hang not hungry, I'm not hungry, I'm not hungry yet. I not hungry yet, yeah, we've gotta feed him quick. <laughs> On a mission to find Liam some food, we went on a hunt around the town checking out the beautiful quaint streets on the way. Harlech is the most picturesque little tourist town with many souvenir shops, a couple of cafes and delis. We managed to find Liam a spot of lunch before going to check out the castle which is situated overlooking the vast, wild, rustic beach and over the sea. This castle is absolutely gorgeous. It's amazing to see a castle that is so well kept and uh, not completely dishevelled. So yeah, it's a really nice castle and the location of it is gorgeous. It's right by the beach on top of a hill overlooking the most amazing scenery. It's just a really, really nice castle. What do you think, Liam? <laughs> I have no idea what that's all about. <laughs> it's so weird, isn't it? Yeah, it's all tied up. There might be both of them tied up or something. There's dismembered somehow. <laughs> one's tiny and one's massive. Yeah, weird. Really odd. Cool, and from one nice town to the next, we're actually going to go now to the real quirky one. Um, it's a town that you've got to pay to get into, believe it or not. Um, and it's going to be very interesting. Very, very, very interesting. Think lots and lots of colour. We hopped back to the van to head to our next stop. So we are off to our next place on this glorious day. The sun is shining, the sky is lovely and blue, only wispy, little wispy clouds um, in the sky. And yeah, and it's nice and warm. It's still, the air is still a little chilly. It's not. Liam doesn't think it is. Not at all. I do, so. Um, but still, it is a nice warm day, so I'm so excited to go to this next place. So off we went with excitement in the air. We headed to the wonderful village of Port Merion, where even the driveway to the car park is stunning. A sign of what we could expect to see inside. Cool, yeah, so we're at Port Merion, just leaving Morgan behind now. It's free parking here, which is good, because if it wasn't free parking, I think I'd cry. It's £17 entrance to this place. Effectively, you're buying your way to walk around a very, very arty town slash village slash resort. But the reason why we're so interested in it is because there's nowhere else like it, probably on the planet. It's just somewhere that everyone should probably visit once in their lives. And we're gonna show you why now. the weather and there's no wind no sun nothing 80 days a moment feeling better but a sweet relief is finding me
this place. That is so beautiful. Wow. Oh my God. It's like the Paradise Village, isn't it? It's like, do you remember if you've watched the original Wizard of Oz, where she gets taken away in the tornado and she arrives with the, the Good Witch of the East or whatever she was called. The place where all they are and the munchkins live and all that sort of stuff. <laughs> that's what this, where the, where the yellow brick road is. The, this is what this is like. It really is. 100%. It's like, it's almost like you could eat the, the, the stuff. And <laughs> it's like Willy Wonka's chocolate factory sort of thing. It's so nice. It's like an idyllic little village. Port Merion, unfortunately, wasn't in The Wizard of Oz, but it is definitely as wonderfully bizarre as the film. The village is built by Sir Clow Williams Ellis between the years of 1925 and 1975 and is now owned by a charitable trust. Described as a fantastic collection of architectural relics and impish modern fantasies, the architecture is equally at home in the ancient, traditional world of the stark Welsh countryside and once brave new world of modern architecture. It was also the location for the cult TV series The Prisoner. Liam and I love it because of the subtropical gardens and colourful buildings. It's a paradise for us, we could spend hours here absorbing its extremely quirky but elegant vibe and on that note we decided to have a drink overlooking the sea so from what we can see this is a fine dining restaurant uh, behind us right on the water it's absolutely so picturesque very very romantic you know score some points if you bring your lady here um, and the hotel's over there and yeah, Port Marion's here, so you can actually stay at loads of different places. It's the most fairy tale location you could probably go to for a date in the whole of the UK. As, as, as I said, you're going to score some serious points if you're playing in there. Are you taking me in there then, Liam? I've just bought you some fizzy water. I'll have you know. <laughs> some Port Marion fizzy water. It's not from the taps, you know. No fine dining for me. I'll take you on a fine dining one if you like. The thing is, we'll just eat it all in about five minutes and go, where's the rest? <laughs> That's the problem, isn't it? <laughs> Can't take us anywhere. <laughs> well, no fine dining for us. However, we did find a map, so we checked out where we'll be going next on our trip. We headed back to the van and made our way to our next stop. So we are on our way to our next location, which is a place called Porth Madog, but I don't think it's pronounced like that. In fact, I know it's not, but I just can't remember how to pronounce it. But first, before we get there, that's where we're gonna park up for the evening. But we're gonna go to a Tesco's, if we can find one on the way. We think that we may be able to, so if we can find it, then yeah, we'll go to Tesco's and then off to Porth Madog. So Liam and I are going to have a quick meal night tonight. We have completely run out of time um, and we've got to go and find our park up. So we're looking around Tesco's now and we're going to grab some food that we can make really quickly. Okay, food shop done. We are now on our way to find our park up for the evening. Hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll be able to find somewhere on the beach or close to the beach to park so let's go and check it out we made our way to the beautiful beach called black rock sands where we heard that it's possible when the tide is out to actually drive on and park so we gave it a go the beach is beautiful vast wild and actually very busy it didn't however feel too overcrowded as it's such a big beach it did feel like something from the wild west though with a sparse dry deserty feel we both loved it. We headed into the back to cook up our dinner. What a gorgeous beach to land up on. I wish we could stay here overnight, but we've already seen the no parking signs, so we officially cannot do that. But we're gonna have some food and just enjoy the time that we can spend here and then move on and find our park up. So yeah, that's what we're doing. It's quick meal night tonight. Like I said earlier, it's a no frills food night, but hopefully it's gonna be really quick so we can enjoy the beach. Today, Liam and I are making separate meals as we sometimes like to do. He had the classic peanut butter and sweet chilli wraps we have officially named the Stella wrap after my auntie Stella and I had fried red pepper with noodles in a sweet and sour sauce with fried bao buns as I didn't have a steamer. This is kind of a test to see if it works. So this is my noodles and sweet and sour sauce with peppers and these bao buns. It didn't quite work in the pan because the underneath of them, I'll show you, they're kind of burnt the underneath but hopefully they haven't burnt too much that it's inedible <laughs> but I'll see anyway but they feel nice and warm like they're, they're nice and warm on the middle hopefully oh wow mmm 
Yeah, that's all right, as long as you don't eat the bottom. Oh, the bottom burn? Mm. Is it? Show me. Mm. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> okay, it kind of worked. It'll do, won't it? It'll do. So this is Black Rock Sands Beach. And it's a bit like the Wild West down here, like because you can drive on it, there's cars and vehicles all over it. You've got vans, motorhomes, cars, people towing jet skis, people towing, ca towing caravans, all sorts come down here. It's £5 for the day, unless you arrive a bit later on and it it's completely free, which it was for us. Literally, the sand is so solid, you can drive over pretty much all of it from the look of it. The tide now is heading in, so we don't actually have that long down here. I just found out, this is one of the ones where we thought we could potentially park down here i just found out from one of the guards here and the barrier gets locked and just found out that it's a thousand pounds fine if they catch you on the beach down here and i said how likely are they to catch you and they said well you'd, you'd be quite unlucky if they did but you wouldn't want to get a thousand pound fine so i know also there's this, this guy came around in his pickup truck he just towed that guy off and he had a megaphone and he came back half an hour ago saying get off the beach you've got to leave and then he came around again and then he came around again to make sure we were going to leave just far too much hassle to watch for you. So anyway, that leaves us in a position where we've got to go and find a park up tonight. But first we're gonna enjoy Black Rock Sands Beach. Man, to have a, to, I think it's Morgan's second time driving on the beach and it's glorious. Always think of you when spring comes Like it's something in the air at that time Don't know why Always dream of you when spring comes It's like the heat on my skin takes me by So we're right by a, uh, we found this on park for night obviously because we were a bit late looking for park ups and uh, we're right by some railway tracks in a, like a little mini car park next to a hedge and a, and a really nice lake over there. Is it going to be a good car park up? I don't know. We're going to have to find out in the morning. We'll let you know in the morning. It could either be really good or really bad. One thing's for sure is that I know that we can definitely probably park here because there's no restriction signs. So at least there's that. Okay, so this actually looks like quite a good park up. Um, there's a little bit of sort of chatter and it sounds like a social club or something going on over, right over there. Um, so there's a lot of sort of talking and laughing and things like that, um, which is okay because that will die down when we go to sleep. The only thing I am slightly worried about is this train track. We are literally right next to the train track. Um, so it may come along, God knows when the trains come. They start early, don't they? So that might wake us up in the morning. Um, but we are in the town center. And if you're in a town center, then I don't think trains really go that fast. So it might just go really slowly, but who knows? We'll see, we'll tell you in the morning. <laughs> like Liam said, We'll try it out and we'll see what happens. So what are you thinking? Should we go look at this lake? Yeah. And that's exactly what we did. The sun was setting, so we grabbed the last bit of light and wandered by the lake before calling it a night. Wow. <laughs> oh my God. How can such nice scenery just be like around the corner and you didn't really know it was there? It's like a, it's like a scene off bloody Jurassic Park or something. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> it really is.
Good morning everyone. Today we have woken up next to like a paradise lake. It is so gorgeous. I'm sorry I'm going straight in with how nice the lake is but it's just absolutely stunning. Um, we stayed over in the car park overnight. We actually moved our van um, because we thought it would be better, a little bit more tucked out the way where we are. And it is. There were no trains that came by as yet. I mean, it's 7.30 in the morning. So it was a really peaceful night's sleep, despite being right next to a train track. This place is just, this is such a good park up. Waking up and hearing the birds, they've been twerping or whatever they do for hours now. We literally woke up to the sound of birds and it was so nice. And mountains in the distance, and then a gorgeous sunrise as well. It's just been such a nice morning. We've got some really cool stuff planned for today, which we're gonna tell you in a bit. I'm so excited. So I'm gonna go back to the van, get Liam and shoot off ASAP. Let's get this day started. Good morning. Good morning, how are you? I'm okay. Where have you just been? Oh, it's so gorgeous down by that lake. I know, I'm, 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 I've got that. I'm so glad we moved because this is the, the view. It's nice. Like, it's so, so nice. One of the, I mean, unpredictably, I know we're near some really nice beaches and stuff like that, but as far as lakes go, this is like one of the nicest views, isn't it, we've we've ever had. Yeah. We're in a heat wave. Oh, we? We're in an official heat wave. Even Wales is in a <laughs> heat wave. So what I was thinking was, as it's a heat wave, we need to be near water, don't we, right? Yeah. So going inland to uh the mountains just yet probably won't be the right thing to do i reckon whilst we've got the weather let's do the lynn peninsula which is where we're going to go to today hopefully and then go into anglesey which we've never been to before and then after that do it go inland to snowdonia national park and do the mountains and, and all that sort of business what do you reckon yeah that sounds good we hopped into the front seats to head off to our next stop along the lynn peninsula we parked up at Traif Landrub Dog and made our way to check out the beach on this sunny morning. We were just walking down and saying, what's the name of this beach again? Where are we? Um, we're on the Limpen Inch, it's the start of the Limpen Inch there. And this is an absolutely stunning beach, like idyllic, like Thailand style. I'm so pleased we came here. Landra Dog is a long stretch of sandy coast with colourful beach huts. The sea remains shallow for quite some distance. Today the sea is calm, making it an ideal place for paddleboarding and swimming. We walked the shoreline before heading off on a hike up the hill to see the Iron Man structure and the views of the beach from the top, which were so pretty. We sat and enjoyed the view of the beach and mountains in the distance. It is absolutely roasting today. Oh my God. I don't know if it's just because we did that big hike, but I am absolutely boiling. And it was so hot, we decided to head onto another must-see beach in the area. This next one being in the top 10 beaches in Wales. So we drove along the coast and found the car park. Wow, literally driving about, for such a long time, about 20 minutes down these tiny little narrow roads. And we've turned up and the car park is almost like it's like a little lay-by. So this is a really out in the sticks kind of beach, as far as I can tell. Probably one um, of the most remote beaches we've ever been to. Yeah, definitely. And uh, and it's still a walk away to get to it, so we'll see what happens. We parked up and headed off on a hike. Oh, I've got a feeling this beach is going to be a mission to get to. Well, this beach, which is called Poor... We're going to put it on a map for you, don't worry. It's a bit of a mission to get to. Very, very long, uh, windy, narrow road to drive here. And then the actual car park for it is quite a long way away from the beach. Got a feeling, though, as with all good paradise beaches, comes with a little sacrifice. And uh, the walk is actually quite beautiful. But it's a bit of a mission. Whoa, well, Adrian. Oh, my God. Absolutely incredible. Such a nice, quiet sort of beach out in the middle of nowhere with very few people on and just the most calm waters. So pretty. 
some things are worth the journey and that this is definitely worth the journey i am going in that water right now I, I've done another 24 hours of, um, almost 24 hours of not eating, so I am so hungry. Uh, I'll really, should we just go and find somewhere beautiful to park up and I'll cook you some delicious food? I would love that. Yeah? Yeah. Right. Cool, we just parked up here. Can't remember the name of it. Once again, Janine will put it up on the screen, but... We just wanted to go somewhere with a view and that's exactly where we parked up. So we have a bit of food with a view and I don't think the views get much better than that. What a great place. Now, food. We've not eaten all day and both of us are starving. With beautiful views out our windows, Liam made a start on dinner. Thank you. Oh, that looks so good. Mmm. That's really nice. That's gorgeous. <laughs> You've got to leak on your leg. I know. <laughs> You might have noticed when in our videos we'll say the word vegan quite a bit we're obviously we're vegan um but the reason why it comes up in in the videos quite a bit is because we'll we have to say some for instance i just we just had a vegan sausage hash well if we say sausages we'll get a lot of people saying i thought you were vegan how are you having sausages if we say vegan sausages we'll get a lot of people saying do you have to keep on saying the word vegan and running it down our throats it's a real it's a real tricky situation um, one thing that I do realise is that if we don't say vegan, like last week, for instance, last week's video, I made a, a Welsh rarebit. The Welsh rarebit was obviously vegan because we're vegan. Um, it was made completely plant-based, and yet because we didn't call it a vegan Welsh rarebit, the we had some people saying, "Oh, you've broken my heart. I thought you guys were vegan." And I've had to explain, go into comments and explain to people that we are. It was actually vegan. Sometimes we'll say it's vegan. Sometimes we'll forget to say it's vegan, like the Welsh rarebit thing. Um, but after eight years of being vegan, there's certain things that we end up saying vegan before because if you don't say it, then people come at you and say, well, I thought you were vegan. You're clearly not if you're having chicken. Well, it's vegan chicken. Or sausages, or it's vegan sausage, or a be uh, beef burger, it's a vegan beef burger. You, basically, we can't win. Uh, just to let you know the situation. Well, now we've got that cleared up, we did the washing and drying up before checking out the local beach and walking off the delicious food that we ate. Realising that we haven't seen one bad beach in the whole time we have been in Wales, it's absolutely blown our minds. Now all we have to do is find a park up and hopefully somewhere by the sea. On the way back to the van we got a refreshing pint of sparkling water after all the sun we got today, then prayed for a great park up. Okay, let's go find a park up. Let's go find a park up. What do you reckon? Yeah. Yeah. Is the back sorted? I don't know. Is the back sorted? <laughs> <laughs> um, Have a look. Let me just double check. We'll soon know if we go around the corner and it all chucks off the shelves. It's sorted. I remember sorting it, I think. Okay. What, what a hot, draining day. <sighs> I'm exhausted. <laughs> it's just like been hot and lots of walking today, haven't we? Yeah. But it's been brilliant. It's been really good. So I'm ready to find a park up, hopefully somewhere really nice and... Oh, no pressure. <laughs> and just chill with a really nice view. That's what I want now. Right, yeah, no pressure, no pressure. <laughs> Making my park up request, we went forwards on our journey around Wales. We left the Lynn Peninsula and headed towards the island of Anglesey. As luck would have it, we found a potential park up right by the sea. We just needed to make sure we could stay here overnight. Well, this is a bloody good park up. 
I was just thinking when we're driving up here, I was like, I'm really sort of hoping that one of these, because there were two, two or three laybys before this one said no overnight parking, and this one doesn't. And not only that, do you, know, do you know how I know it's a really, really good park up? Because Country Van Life is parked here. And if you don't know who Country Van Life is, he's that van over there. And he's he's been doing van life as, as long as we have, about a year and a half sort of thing. And it's that van over there. And he seems like a really, really good guy. And we'll go over and meet him and say hello quickly. This is how we know it's a good park up because Steve from Country Van Life UK is down here. And if you're not following Country Van Life UK already, make sure you do. Come say hello to Sky. <laughs> lovely little rescue dog. And he's doing it properly. He goes to he goes to a lot of places and he sees the areas, Wales especially, Scotland especially, a lot more than we do. We we, we skim through these places, but he, he really knows it. It's beautiful beach here. It's all free as well. No signs. Glorious. They're out there, guys. You just got to find them. Yeah. Look at this place. Just take your time. My God. Great to meet these two as well. <laughs> it was a pleasure to meet Steve at Country Van Life and Sky the Gorgeous Rescue Dog. They showed us around their beautiful van which was so homely and looked very comfortable. We chatted with him and the other van lifers in the area and admired the location which, on this occasion, we have all ended up here on this day watching the sun go down over the ocean. Okay, cool, that's us for the evening. There's a uh, Country Van Life on top of his van with his uh, with his GoPro out, and uh, that's us parked up here with a few couple of other vans. It's very chilled out, it's very, very nice, catching up with a lot of different van lifers. It's just a really perfect end to a very nice few days. It started off in a um, nude beach holiday park, and it ended up at this completely remote location out in the middle of nowhere, looking at Anglesey, and just over there is Anglesey Island, and Anglesey is where we're heading next. So we'll see you next time for some adventures in Anglesey. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. See you then. When we wake, hear the birds and see the sun. Side by side, our fears are done. All the good times just begun. Oh, we know what we have. Let's hold on tight. Found what we're looking for in life Call us crazy but things are finally right With you and I the future is bright